Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Tuesday morning Mortgage Coach interview. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. Every Tuesday, I am interviewing someone amazing, whether that's a top performing mortgage professional, whether that's a best selling author, just someone that's bringing great inspiration, ideas, and strategy. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that we do record this. If you have not already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I was just checking it out before the call this morning. And we've got over 1,200 videos in our YouTube channel. It's been viewed over 127,000 times. This month, over 7,100 views. Uh, that's 51,000 minutes. That's 1,125 hours. That's 35 full 24-hour days of Mortgage Coach Leadership. So please, make sure if you haven't already, go to our YouTube channel, click the subscribe button, so that as we upload new content, new education, you're getting it firsthand. I also started a new a new thing. Again, I'm not going to say I'm going to do this every week, but I I posted my first um, what do you call it LinkedIn post uh, about a week or two ago. I was really impressed with how many people viewed it. Um, the leadership, you know, the, the the quality and the number of influencers that watched it, liked it, shared it. So I created another one. It's called Hey Realtors, and I was making a, a big push for Hey Realtors. Does your loan officer uh, provide a total cost analysis? If yes, you're working with the best of best. If no, why not? And so, uh, Jen, I don't know if you um, checked out that post yet, uh, and I also don't know if you're doing anything like this on LinkedIn. But any any thoughts or comments? Well, I think it's I think it's great to do something like that, especially. And thank you for doing that because if we are, are tied to you um, on LinkedIn, then our real estate agents can see that. And so I appreciate you doing that as well. But I, yeah, I did have a chance to look at that, and um, you know, I think it's great. It's it's definitely differentiating us in the market. It's showing us as being something um, of superior nature in a nice way. Um, but I think that that's really important um, to elevate yourself and make make yourself different and I appreciate you putting that there so yeah I thought it was wonderful good good well it was a lot of fun and more and more we're, we're, we're at mortgage coach we're going to realtors directly and telling them hey work with a mortgage coach make sure you're getting your buyers are getting a total cost analysis and for all you mortgage coaches on the call you can really turn some of that into a script so with your realtor you know make, get them to understand this concept that every home buyer deserves and appreciates a total cost analysis, especially when you or we are showing them how they can use their mortgage to build wealth with real estate. So make sure you get that out there. Uh, this concept of building wealth with real estate is with a mortgage is important. Again, when Dave Ramsey, when I interviewed Dave a few, well, it's been a few months now, I love this concept of always start the relationship by going into the goals, do a total cost analysis to show the family how they're going to hit those goals. So, so the our special guest in my top producer interview today is is Jen uh, Duplessis. Did I say that right, Jen? Duplessis. Mm -hmm. Duplessis, right on. So, uh, I'm going to do some housekeeping from last week, but real quick for anybody that's on this call, if you could just tell everybody what market you're in and a little bit about your mortgage practice before we do the official interview. <laughs> Sure, absolutely. Well, I'm in the uh, greater Washington, D.C. market. I actually live in Virginia, so 95% of my loans are done in Virginia. Um, the balance is done primarily in Washington, D.C., with a few in, in Maryland. And um, I have a team of um, five, and I have a dedicated processor, a dedicated um, underwriter, and a dedicated closer so that I can you know, know, know and anticipate what's going to be happening. I've been in lending for, it'll be 33 years on March 1st. And um, I've absolutely loved it, you know, every bit of time. And uh, I love hearing people uh, complain about all the changes that we're going through, but the fact of the matter is all of us on this call, if we didn't have change, we'd be bored. And <laughs> so accept, accept it and, you know, embrace it and move on and, and figure out ways to sell around it and all that good stuff. Um, Sixty-seven percent of my business is purchase money transactions. My average loan amount um, personally is six hundred and forty-seven thousand. Uh, for my team, which consists of one other um, sub originator, which is my husband. So um, my title is HCIC or head chick in charge. 
and um, his is, his brings our total team average down to 385. <laughs> we'll give him a hard time. Well, it was nice meeting you guys yeah. uh, at the Lenders One event. Uh, they are just yeah. amazing, amazing people. So I've I've been looking oh, forward to this you. top producer interview for a long time now. Thank you. Good. Well, before we get into the details and do what I, I like to think of as kind of a virtual site visit, I want to remind everybody on a few things from last week's call with Josh Metal. Uh, if you were not on that call, it was recorded. It is on our go to meeting link. And last time I interviewed Josh, his call I think was the most watched um, interview I did with a loan officer last year. It had over, God, I want to say almost 2,000, 1,600, 1,800 views. So his call last year was our most our most watched and loved call. Uh, it was I did record this, watch this one. Josh has really evolved how he uses Mortgage Coach. He's doing over two hundred million dollars a year in volume. He's got a, a strong focus in niche around helping doctors. So I think he's got a, a very interesting practice. And regardless of what market you're in, where you're at, this is a loan officer that really knows how to go from price to advice, built systems to do it. Make sure you check that out. Uh, you know, the first half of the call was was you know, Josh was was really moved by the Simon Sinek call that I did. Uh, and and he's watched that video multiple times. We talked about the importance of your why. Uh, everybody who's on this call, I want to make you a better mortgage coach. So I'm always talking about it. it always starts with why. Why are you a mortgage coach? Uh, I did want to highlight a couple scripts that came out of that call from Josh. Uh, I'm not going to read this out loud because we recorded this. You can go, go back and look at the recording and do a screenshot of this. And we'll also put this in some of our script kits. But he had a great script around how he gets a family to click on the Mortgage Coach TCA. Josh said that 100% of his borrowers click on that link. And I hear a lot of loan officers that say, oh, you know, not enough people. I make this video. I make this TCA, and they don't look at it. Well, 100% of Josh's clients do it. Listen to that call if you want to hear his magic. Uh, I will repeat his last kind of what I call trigger words. He says to the family, I'm going to send you this total cost analysis that's going to make choosing the right loan ridiculously simple. Powerful. You want to get people to watch your mortgage coach video, uh, say that. And of course, listen to the call for other things that Josh does. He also gave me some scripting, and Jen, I'm going to want to ask you this same question, but how do you get realtors to understand your value? You know, so the, the fact that you're giving all of their families a total cost analysis, how do you integrate and build that into your realtor conversation? So Josh gave us some great scripting. You could take mm -hmm. a screenshot of this. Marcy, I will try to get you a copy of these um, that we can put in, um, in our handout section for anybody that wants to write these down. But uh, just some great, great leadership for everybody on this call to really help take being a mortgage coach to the next level. So um, um, Jen, before I bring you in, I do want to bring one success story from the trenches because Chris Chambers is someone that is a top mortgage coach user. He's been using mortgage coach for a long time. I know Chris because he's always forwarding me ideas. He's always forwarding success stories. So Chris, you, you have given me a success story from a couple days ago, or I think it was from last week. If you wouldn't mind just bringing that in as a you know, fellow mortgage coach user and share this with your peers, I think it's a good kickoff to today's call. OK, can you hear me, Dave? We can hear you. Okay, super. Uh, yeah, Dave, so I'm, I'm working out in the morning and I'm <clears throat> checking out my email while I'm on the elliptical and I see an email from a financial planner that I really hadn't done too much business with and don't really take that much with, uh, which is a mistake. But I then see that she wants to have me evaluate a client of hers who wants to go from a 30-year to a 20-year. So she sends me an email, could you give me some rates, et cetera, I saw some things in your online app. And so I said, when can we meet uh, by phone? She said about 12 o'clock. So I went back and uh, created a TCA in about oh, 12 minutes, usually what it takes, by copying another one and, and just modifying the options. And then sent that link to the CFP at about five minutes before we're supposed to get on the call. So we hop on the call. She opens it up in about 15 minutes. After she's seen what she what what I'm showing her, which by the way she had that pretty much set up in an Excel spreadsheet, but her comment was, "This is so much more, you know, this is prettier than 
that's more visually appealing than mine, it's more powerful than mine. Obviously, she can't share an Excel spreadsheet and make the changes on the fly. So I, this is this goes to the Generation D, like digital, right? So she's now texting her client uh, that do you have time to get on this call. Client then gets on the call, opens up the link that the CFP sends to her, the mortgage coach link of the TCA, and now we're on a three-way call, all within about maybe 20 minutes of when I started the call with the CFP. After 10 minutes of going through the uh, options with the borrower, uh, with the CFP chiming in, uh, we then go uh, send her to our online app. <clears throat> Guaranteed Rate has an online app where the client actually can uh, go online, pull their own credit, run LP, and get a Freddie Mac LP AUS approval, which she did. And I timed it because I get an email when she starts it and an email when she finishes it, and she got that in 12 minutes. And then I went in there, took a look at everything, and had her locked by the end of the day on a $325,000 loan. So, you know, if mortgage coach, let's say mortgage coach costs 1000 a year, just use that as a rough number, uh, my ROI on that one call, which took total maybe about 35, 40 minutes, was 300%, make about $3,000 on that deal. One, one deal paid for mortgage coach. And, and, and I have now a CPA who also then, a CFP who said, well, I've got two other clients that you need to talk to and let's, let's evaluate their deals. So that's, that's my story. Love it, Chris. So uh, to me, that's just, I, by the way, I love that term you use, Generation D. Uh, and by the way, that's everybody. I've got a, a, a post that I'm going to put out next week and it really focuses on the fact how everybody's a millennial, you know. Obviously, millennials grew up with mobile phones, and they're better with their mobile devices. But when you really look at what what millennials want, I mean, we all live on our mobile devices now. And so this concept of whether it was a financial planner, a CPA, a realtor, to be able to go from they want mortgage options, and they want to do it in a way that helps a family achieve their goals, you send a link, it's dynamic, you can make you know dynamic changes in real time, that client has your mortgage advice in their back pocket because it's on their mobile device, and and then you could just go from one conversation to application to closing. I just thought it was a great example of being a great teacher, being a great leader, and of course being a great mortgage coach. So Chris, thanks for jumping on. Uh, feel free to you know jump in throughout the call. I'm gonna transition to this top producer interview with Jen. Uh, anything else you want to say before we roll? No, but thanks for thanks for everything you're doing on this, Dave. Because um, one other thing I wanted to add was, I thought I knew Mortgage Coach pretty well because I've been using it for about a decade. However, I went on one of those Wednesday calls for the mobile device, and I was pretty much blown away by what you guys had done and what I didn't know that was capable with the phone and Mortgage Coach to do some things that I didn't really know that I could do. So. I would encourage people to hop on those calls every once in a while and upgrade your skill sets if you if you haven't done that in a while. You know, that's a good reminder. So everybody, every Wednesday we focus on how you can use Mortgage Coach to create things on your mobile device, how to share things, how to share things, or show things and share things. So um, Marcy, if you could put a link to that um, Wednesday call so you can either one, watch a video that Jacob and I did, and then every Wednesday we're doing a live call. I do believe that the biggest difference between the millennial and the boomer and the Xer is how we use our mobile devices strategically. So we've dedicated, you know, every single Wednesday, 11 o'clock Pacific, we are teaching you how to use your mobile device as a mortgage coach. So thanks for that shout out, Chris. So thanks a lot, my friend. So you bet. keep up great work, Dave. Thanks a lot for you. No, no, really, really appreciate it. Um, so Jen. You know, it's all about you for the next 45 minutes. Uh, you did a nice job of just sharing, you know, who you are, where you're at, what you're doing. Uh, from my perspective, when, you know, we just we just met in person um, a matter of months ago, and I was just blown away with her story. I was blown away with how she is an educator. Uh, if you Google Jen, you know, you're going to find um, a tremendous amount of education. Uh, so let's let's talk about some of that. If you could frame, you know, who you are as an educator to families and realtors, and while you're doing that, I'll kind of showcase some some things that are part of your platform. 
Sure, I'm happy to. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, let me just start from the beginning. I think that's that's probably the best way to go is that, uh, you know, a long time ago I decided that I was not going to be a um, traditional loan officer who delivered rates and, you know, and went to broker opens and open houses and things like that. I wanted something that would differentiate me, and I was fortunate enough that in my extended career, I was a national training manager for uh, World Savings or World Mortgage. Some of you may know it as that, and um, and I was also a regional and division manager. So I did a lot of training. You know, the old standard flip chart training. You know how to how to actually train using a flip chart and. Uh, so I thought, well, if I, you know, I'm comfortable enough doing that, you know, very easily, let me just take that on the road and, and teach people. So obviously I started with, um, you know, presenting at, at um, um, offices, you know, real estate offices and things like that. And it just progressed from there that people were so excited about what they were hearing that they'd say, you know, can you bring, can you come in here and do more with us? And so it just really perpetuated from there. So several years ago I obtained my... Um, teaching certifications with um, the Commonwealth of Virginia and now I have 26 hours of continuing education for um, real estate agents that ranges everywhere anywhere from business planning to math class that's my my newest one and I have six hours of math class for real estate agents which I uh, use and incorporate mortgage coach in because I want them to see firsthand what makes me different and how I how I do things different so I wanted to be this this edu seller as I call it um, where I'm educating and selling at the same time and maybe maybe that was because way back when I didn't want to be a salesperson um, I wanted to be a, an educator uh, and I didn't want to be looked at in that facet, so so that's where that all started. Um, but I found that not only was I comfortable doing that with real estate agents in large and small groups and at their their sales meetings and off offsite and things that I put on myself, but I found that I had and especially because what you'll find out about me is I'm a big tracker. I track everything. What I found is that I was my capture rate or my retention rate and conversion rate was significantly better when I met with a client face to face. I mean significantly. It went from 37% on the phone to 85% in person. And so I, of course I, I thought, well, what are my sales skills? You know, is it my rates? It, what is it that I'm? Why is it I'm not getting a good conversion rate? And so I, of course, did all that self analysis. But what I found is that when I meet with them face to face, I have a better uh, capture rate. Now that capture rate is 92 percent. So it continues to get better. So I make it a point to have discovery meetings. I've heard them called strategy sessions as well, but I call them discovery meetings where I'm spending about an hour and a half with my clients um, face to face. If I'm not able to do face to face, then I do, you know, something like what we're doing here today, you know, but I do a join a join.me meeting and I'm able to walk them through everything I would if I were in person with them. But um, I'd say 98% of my clients I meet face to face. So in the process of doing that, I'm edu selling them as well, tying them to me, um, and then anyone else who's just quoting rates on the phone can't compare. And and so that was really what what set out, you know, my reasoning uh, behind being this person who who really educates everybody around them. Love love it. So folks, if you have questions uh, for Jen throughout the call, feel free to post those in the control panel for GoToWebinar. I will keep an eye out for those and try to get your questions answered. So, so Jim, before we get into your, you know, call it your perfect loan process, because one thing that struck me is one, how dynamic you are, what a great communicator you are, but you've got processes. So we are going to go through, we're going to show a list of what Jen's processes are. Uh, by the way, we've also <laughs> yeah. put some of those things in the handout section. But let's talk about your podcast because that's another thing that I thought was pretty pretty unique. You've got a podcast. Uh, a lot of people on this call might not even know what that means. I mean, let's not do podcast 101, but if you could just right. <laughs> share your podcast strategy as a mortgage professional, um, yep. I think it's just something else that distinguishes you and it's something that everybody can get value from. 
Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, yeah, and so I won't do a podcast 101, but you know, we all have that purple uh, icon on our cell phones <laughs> if we have an iPhone. And uh, you know, I'm, I not only am an edge seller, but I am a life learner, and I use podcasts across all kinds of things for me to learn as well. Um, and one of my favorite is um, Smart Passive Income. That's another one that's out there that I absolutely love because I look for ways to have a variety of ways to make money. Um, but what I did with the podcast was, you know, I, I just feel in our lives what we do in our formidable stages is that, you know, of life is that we we um, are learning. We're spending a, a ton of time learning in school and in college and, you know, how to develop friendships and whatnot. And then the rest of our life and the biggest chunk of our life is spent earning. And then we get to a point in our lives, and I'm, I'm there now, where I want to return. So you, you learn, you earn, and you return. And that's where I'm at. And I, I just had this insatiable appetite to help people in their um, in their businesses, you know, and loan officers specifically, you know, and, and I don't make a claim that I am, you know, the best originator out there. I just know that, that what I do works for me and it's made me extremely successful. And so I wanted to give back. And so, so that's what I do on this podcast. When I'm asked questions by other loan officers or there's things that I'd like to share, uh, I, you know, absolutely love um, sharing and doing that. So that's what created the podcast. And I'm just having a blast with it, a great time with it. So, guys, I, I pulled up my, my iPhone. I did a search. You can see that, you know, you can literally go through here. I subscribe to it and play these. So, so real quick, because I, I do know free. you have, yeah, they're, they're free to, to <laughs> us. Um, I know you have, you know, you're getting some business from it with realtors. Uh, if you could also just share anything you want to share around how you use it as a strategy, because you also mentioned some income. So a minute or two on that, and then we'll get into some perfect processes. Yeah, um, yeah. As a as an income strategy, yeah, it's it's free to anybody who wants to listen to it. And and you know, for those that are listening on the call, this is great to give to realtors too, because you can just replace the word realtor with referral partner, etc. It's it's good for everybody. Um, but yeah, so as an income strategy, uh, you know, I have sponsors, and um, sponsors will pay me to do uh, every click, every download that I have, I get paid to just for the download, so it's a great stream of income. And the reason that sponsors are wonderful because I have a very specific audience and they want to go after that audience, so that's that's where the stream of income um, you know, is derived from it. But does that answer your question? Yeah, how, how many subscribers do you have? Like how many people subscribe it, how many people look at it? Just uh, Yeah, I'm, I think, well, I, I um, launched it in January of this year, so if we're almost a year in, and I think I've got about 3,200 subscribers, but that's nothing because we have 620,000 loan officers, so tell your friends, share it. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just, the more the merrier because the more questions I get, the more opportunities I can, I can to share and give advice on, you know, some things that, um, you know, I think can help you, your business grow. Right on. Well, Nina Hunter jumped in and said your podcasts are great. So you've oh, got a friend and someone who loves it. And then thank Dawn you. Robinson just came in with a question. She said, are these available on Android, Google Play? Um, how would you answer that? Yeah, they, they definitely are, but they're also available. If you just go and log in, yes, you can, but I'm not sure how you get to them. Uh, but if you go on to just on to your computer and go to iTunes and podcasts, you can find me there too. So you can listen to me on your computer rather than on your phone. And it will, um, I'm sure iTunes has a way to show you how to get it on Android. Just yeah. not sure. So do, do a Google search, Don. And, and by the way, Don, if you do figure it out um, while we're on the call and you want to jump in with some direction for everybody on Google or if anybody who is using an Android wants to weigh in with, you know, what to do, how to go or a link, Either throw that in chat or throw that in go to meetings. Uh, by the way, Julie Julie Short uh, just weighed in and said, "I use um, podcast addiction. Um, I'm all right. I'm a podcast addict on Android." So, all right, guys, oh, we'll perfect. keep it going. Yeah. yeah, we're getting lots of feedback, um, so that's great. Uh, so let's talk about your perfect process. You know, if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind, uh, you know, when I did the call with Josh yesterday, or not yesterday, but last week, you know, we really drilled down on that front end borrower 
or experience. And, and he talked, and I, I was really getting him to focus on, you know, when do you give the mortgage coach report? How do you make sure that when they get the mortgage, report, mortgage coach report, they really appreciate and respect the information? And he talked a lot about his, you know, he has a questionnaire too. So he talked mm -hmm. a lot about he's really using the TCA and he, he's selling it, he's describing it as the bait to get them to fill out the questionnaire. Um, by the way, so if you wouldn't, one, mind sharing your process, and then two, describing your questionnaire a little bit. And then again, folks, we've already put this available as a handout. So what I'm showing visually on the screen, you can download. Jen was kind enough to share this with everybody. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, um, so I, I actually, in my experience, and I have handed this out to a multitude of loan originators over the years, in my experience, um, you know, because of the way that I set myself up in the very beginning, I, I, uh, I guess I it would start it start from this. So when I'm talking, you know, when I call my referral source, I mean my refer or my client, and I say, hi, you know, um, you know, Dave asked me to give you a call. I understand that you're looking to purchase, a, you know, home, and I'm I'm here and happy to help. And so, how do you know Dave? That's the first thing I ask. And then the second thing is, you know, what did Dave tell you about me? Because I coach my referral partners on how to sell me. And I, one, I'm checking. I'm doing some checking to make sure that they are selling me the way that I want that I want to be sold. But um, I'm also trying to get a frame of reference so that I have a complete understanding. And you know, usually the conversation is just, you know, oh, they said you're really great, and you'll take all the time that I need, and you know, that you'll answer my questions, and that you're a strong advocate for me, and um, all of those good things. So I've already set up the um, the referring partner to show me or to to explain to the client exactly how I'm going to be and that I'm not a typical loan officer. And so I have never, ever had a client not want to fill out this five-page document. Um, in fact, I've handed it to some loan officers who said, well, I'm going to revamp it and make it shorter. And I said, why? It works. And, you know, it, it's there for a reason. And... Um, you know, and, and so I, I use it every single time. So I don't find that I have to have the TCA as a reason to have them do it. I, I use this for a specific purpose, and primarily um, it is because I'm a mortgage coach, right? I want to know everything about them. I focus specifically on entrance strategies with my clients. I focus on mortgage management while they have the loan, and then I also focus on exit strategies right from the get-go. I make sure that they know that I am not going anywhere. They cannot break up with me at closing, and I have the systems in place to ensure that they that they won't do that. So I use this form to, to identify and bring out and highlight things that they're not thinking about. So a real good example would be someone who comes to me who says, I'm going to do an FHA loan, um, I'm going to get all of my down payment from a gift, and I'm living with mom and dad because I'm saving money for, for my house, and yet they're still getting a gift. And then I ask them what their exit strategy is, and they're only going to be in the house for five years. And so, they're, so let me get this straight. You're not making any rent or mortgage payment, and yet you still won't be able to save, but you're going to buy a house that's going to yield a $3,000 a month payment. Let's talk about that. So they have a come to Gen meeting, and you know we talk about that and say, you know, can we develop a strategy for prepayment so that that can happen, or can't we? And it's better to know than to wonder. You know, so let's define whether or not this this entrance strategy that you're proposing is actually going to work as an exit strategy. So. Of course, the mortgage management that happens in between is me keeping this document on record and referring to it all the time with all my notes on it to make sure that we're progressing along you know, to, um, to their exit strategy so that we, I can guarantee for myself annuity income, but also for the real estate partner, you know, my realtor partner. So that's the first reason I use it, primarily because I'm a mortgage coach. The second reason is on page two, and you guys can sort of see it here on, on this screen. There's a lot of, um, it's question, I don't know, 18, 16. Um, and what I'm asking them is to identify and tell me about their life insurance agent, their um, um, estate planner. Yeah, so you'll see it right there. It's uh, right here. Their estate planner, 
their um, financial planner, their CPA, all of those pieces. And um, the reason I'm doing that is to is twofold. One is if they rank them between one and five as being okay, or they give them a zero, which is very common for people to have a zero in there. Um, if they do that, then I'm going to introduce them to one of my referral partners. I firmly believe that if I need 200 referrals for the year, that I have to give 400. So this is my way of doing that. So if they rank them between, there we go, question 18. Before, so if they rank them between a 0 and 5, I'm going to introduce them to one of my referral partners. If they rank them between 6 and 10, then I'm going to grow my network. And I'm going to ask them for an introduction. Uh, to them so that I can introduce that um, financial advisor, whatever capacity it is, in, into my world of um, collaboration. Because that's one of the things that I really focus on with my clients is it, it's that I'm using this mortgage planning questionnaire to assist me in guiding you, but I'm also going to be collaborating with your financial planner and with your estate planner and with your CPA if you have them. And if you don't have them, I'm going to introduce you to people so that um, so that we can make those decisions because while we're all real good at knowing tax benefits and things like that and, and different strategies, we don't want to cross that line, you know, and pretend to be any of those. So that collaboration is something that clients absolutely love so that it's client-centric and not Jennifer-centric. It's not what's good for me. It's not what's good for the financial planner. It's what's good for the client, and we work on that as a group together. I love it. I love it. So Ooh. I want to I want to drill down this a little more. I also want to get yeah. into your perfect loan process. But I yeah. had a great question come in from Rachel. So Rachel, mm -hmm. thanks for the question. And she said, I'm a 32-year-old loan officer that's new to the business. I work in a builder joint venture lending office with no realtor contacts for referrals. Where would you suggest I start? What kind of advice would you give a young loan officer? So let's. I know it's a little bit of a rabbit trail. But I think it's a great question that can serve a lot of people, and I have a feeling that you're going to give us a great answer. Yeah, okay, so so let me give you an acronym that might help you um, in, in doing, in, in maybe identifying, you know, what areas that would work, and it's called LAUNCH, okay? So the first thing is that you want to leverage your relationships with anybody and everybody you have to meet realtors. So rather than you going into it, <laughs> and I'm sorry if anybody's on the call who does broker opens and open house, I'm so sorry. Um, I just, you know, I don't want to go someplace where I meet one person and I'm the one of 50 people trying to meet that one person. So I don't want to go to broker opens and I don't want to do open houses. I want, I want it to be the reverse. I want to do a class where I can pick from the litter and they're coming to me and I can decide who it, who I want to work with. And that elevates me right there because I'm not a cat on a marble floor trying to meet every realtor that's out there and grabbing a thousand different cards and, you know, and all these things. I'm very selective in who I work with and that's by design and that has nothing to do with my tenure. That's you being selective with who you work with. You know, we're, it's a tough business. So we don't, we don't want to work with people that are going to be, um, you know, the vampires on our energy bus, if you've ever read that book. So um, the first is just leverage every late relationship that you have. Everybody you know who's, who owns a house, who's renting a house, who sold a house, um, whether they're a client or a friend or a family member, um, your referral partners, so your financial planners, a plumber, a home inspector, anybody, who do you use for your real estate transaction? I would love an introduction. Would you help me? So leverage that. A is auction, er, auction, action, you know, taking action on that. Don't just accumulate the names like you accumulate business cards at a networking event. Take action on it. Actually meet them, find out, use, um, I have a networking summary, I'm happy to share Dave later, but a networking summary by using the frog method or approach, which is uh, another acronym, which is talking to them about their family, their recreation, their occupation, and their goals. Dig deep into these relationships. Date your referral partners. Don't just have one date and hope to, you know, get a phone call back. So, you know, take action. The next is um, needs, assessing their needs. Don't come in. We have a tendency in our industry to come in with this big, big toolbox 
and we just dump it on the floor and say, pick something instead of listening to their needs and then I, and saying, ah, I know the tool you need, and then pull that tool out of your toolbox rather than you know, kind of throwing up on them with all your products and all these crazy things you can do. Identify um, you know, what their, um, their needs are. So um, uh, LA Action, oh, I'm sorry, I don't even have it in the right order. Sorry about that. You, I can't spell it, launch. Uh, U is utility. You know, know what your capacity is. Know what you can and can't do. Don't go out there and pretend that you're the best 203K renovation loan officer if you've never done it. Don't go out and talk about reverse mortgages if you've never done them. So know what your util utility and capacity is. So L-A-U-N needs C, credibility. Be a mortgage coach. Get designations. Um, teach. Be an instructor. Um, you know Anything that you can do to elevate your credibility. And so that's part of being a life learner. And then the last part of it, H, is habits. You have to develop habits, and that's what my systems are about. You cannot um, be inconsistent. You can't be gung-ho about doing it today and then not tomorrow. You've got to have habits in place so that you have you know, a consistency in your business. You can't date them and then not follow up with them. It's just it, it makes you look really bad. So launch. That's what I would say to do. Does that help? Yeah, it was awesome. So uh, I want to remind everybody, I've interviewed an author by the name of Bob Bodine a couple times. He's wrote a book called The Power of Who, which I always tell people, I mean, I've read it multiple times. I would refer it to anybody regardless of their age, but I, I really advocate it strongly for anybody starting in business because it just, it changes the paradigm around, you know, how we serve people. And, and how, you know, we're, we're not shy about doing business with our friends. So I would just push to Rachel, read The Power of Who, uh, turn, you know, influencers, people that are going to help you in your business into your who. And, uh, and that, again, great advice from Jen. So by the way, Jen, what was the G in Frog? Uh, family, recreation, occupation, what was the G? Goals. Goals. What goals. are their goals? Because you want to help them get to their goals because you're going to give them a whole bunch of referrals because they're a partner, but you don't, if you don't know what their goals are, you won't be able to do that. Absolutely, and I mean, that's, as a mortgage coach, it always starts with the goals, and then when you create that total cost analysis, it should be how they're going to use mortgage to build wealth and achieve their goals. I mean, that's the story that you're telling. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're, you know, when you're talking to a realtor, you're, you're showing them in a visual way with graphs and charts how you're going to help their, their, their families and their buyers um, leverage a mortgage to build wealth with real estate. So, by the way, if anybody took good notes on the other acronym, I just posted what FROG was. Feel free to put that in um, in chat. Uh, again, this is great stuff. I, really I can appreciate send it, Jen. You. Yeah, no, but we'll just yeah, we'll, 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 we'll wing it right here. So, okay. you know, I, okay, when, well, when you and I met, when you and I, oh, did you have something you wanted to say? I didn't want to cut you off. No, I was going to say I can repeat it if you want me to. But it's up to you guys. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, we recorded the call. Someone took notes. We'll there you have go. it in a minute. We'll have it in a minute. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay. All right. So, so, you know, that was the other thing. When we talked, again, you were so, I mean, present. So you had a skill of presence. You had passion, ambition. You were obviously a leader. And then you, you just you talked about your checklist, your perfect loan process. So, so I don't, we don't need to go through this line by line. No. So why don't you why don't you start with the why you have this checklist, the perfect process, and then let's yeah. talk about what it is. I will try to, you know, kind of blow it up while we talk so that people can see it a little bit. Okay. All right, that sounds good. All right. Well, definitely the why behind this is that uh, okay, this goes way back because I, you know, started my perfect loan process before it was popular to have a perfect loan process. Um, I uh, one, I'm German. I'm 100% German, um, and I also. So uh, studied architectural design and construction engineering. So I've got that kind of mentality of, of systems. You know, first this, then this, the logical piece. And um, and I thought I would be an underwriter. I was an underwriter for nine years, but I discovered I didn't like paper. I like people. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I have a little bit of best of the both both worlds. But uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, a lot of things that I do are about football. Uh, my son played football in college. He was a quarterback. So I, I, uh, everything seems to be about football. So I'd rather be always on, you know, the offense. Um, 
you know, and be proactive rather than being in a defensive mode and be reactive. I just think it's a time waster. And um, and, I, and I don't like the feeling I get when I'm reactive or don't want to make a phone call or, or that kind of thing. So for me, how it started is way back, these are the days of faxing and we didn't even have computers <laughs> and all that. Um, you know, I'd get a call from a realtor and, and it sounds kind of like this, hi, <laughs> you know, um, I'm this realtor, has the appraisal been ordered? You know, when's it coming in? Was the loan sent on to writing? It was all this stuff, and it was like, you know, what? Who did this to you? Who did this <laughs> that you feel like you have to do my job? Uh, that was good. And uh, so I want to undo that, you know. And I thought, I thought, well, the reason that they're trying to do my job is because someone screwed up or didn't communicate. And we know that the biggest issue, you know, between lenders and and um, or loan officers and and realtors is lack of communication. It's it's clearly the number one thing. And so I thought, well, how do I communicate? How do I get the information out to them before they bug me? And, and I really am trying to hold them at bay because the only conversations I want to have with real estate agents are positive conversations. I want them to be about me finding out about their business using Frog. I want it to be about me offering solutions to help their business grow. I want um, the conversations to be good news. In fact, in this process, one of the things that I do is I call the listing agent um, after the loan is approved, and it's funny how, you know, if the listing agent's never worked with me, I go, hi, it's Jen, um, you know, with the Kearney team, and, uh, and what's wrong? What's wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong, nothing wrong. I just wanted to call and let you know, you know, hopefully you received the email that the loan's been approved. I just wanted to see how the process is going. And they're like, oh, yeah, oh, no, it's great, it's great. So, you know, the, the tendency is to only get phone calls that are bad news rather than us taking those opportunities and using those opportunities to increase our um, our relation or improve our relationships that we can increase our business. So it was just a game for me. It was, um, I, I started it on an eight and a half by 14 piece of paper with all of my drafting tools because at that time we didn't even have Excel. And the object of the game was, you know, just going through and saying, what are all the things I want to say and when I want to say and what do I want to do? And then the object of the game was just filling in the boxes. X, I did it, I did it, I did it. And I could look real quickly and see where I I still haven't filled in a box for somebody so that I could take action on it and, and move forward with it. So that was my why. My why was let me do my job, you do your job. It was very self-serving. It's just like keep away. Well, years later, it became much more than that. When I go to closings, because I attend all my closings, and I say, hi, I'm Jen, the lender. They, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, I get all your updates. That is so awesome. I want to do business with you. Now, what do I do? I say, well, time out. Don't send me. Can I have your card? They immediately want my card. Mm -hmm. You can have my card, but don't send me any business. Let's get together and see if there's a basis for us to do business together. So, And not as rough as that, but I do say, oh, that would be wonderful. Let's get a time. But now my process actually includes that, so I don't have that kind of response at closing because I've already most likely met with them. But that that ended up happening was, wow, this is a way for me to increase my business, not only serve my client very well, serve the referring um, real estate agent very well or a partner, but also I could I could get more business on the backside of this by having the listing agent um, see how I perform and, and out-compete you know, with people around me. Then I found out that it actually allows the real estate agents um, the opportunity to sell more homes because my buying agent does not have to call the listing agent. The listing agent doesn't have to call the buying agent who then has to call me, who then I have to call my processor and all this stuff. So it actually frees them up to go be able to sell um, more homes. In fact, I, had, I have a real estate agent I have a relationship with for now 21 years. And he called me and he said, you know, I need you to not call the borrower with the, the um, final cost at closing because um, I need to do that. I, I need to show and demonstrate that I'm worth my, my weight in gold or my money, my income. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. You want to call? I'm, I'm the one who knows the numbers. Yeah, I want to be the one who calls. Okay, fine. So I called him and said, hey, Andy, uh, you know, the numbers for this loan are, and he goes, why are you calling me? And I said, well, you wanted me to do that. You want me to call you? And he said, I don't have time for that. So it was kind of a cute story. And I said, you know what, Andy, and I've known him for a long time. I said, would you just shut up and go sell some more homes? So we had some fun. 
with it. But that's kind of, that's the why. That's why this did that. Is I I have better things to do than to be um, doing that. And I don't mean it in a really bad way. It's just that it provides a great service by pitching out information to them before they're asking. I feel if someone calls me and asks what the status is, I have lost. Yeah, so I don't no. get those calls. Well, I, I, I have interviewed. I have interviewed hundreds of top performers and you know they all have you know a few things in common and one of those is they have a perfect process and they have proactive communication and and so it's great yeah. to see what you've done I think it's really cool that you were willing to share it not everybody either one has it this well organized and documented nor is everybody willing to share this with you know hundreds of mortgage coach professionals so mm -hmm. folks I want to make sure you notice at the top She's got the total cost analysis with a video to the borrower. She's got the total cost analysis to the realtor to make sure it's a communication tool. Notice at the, you know, in the close, you know, there's an annual review. We're seeing more and more mortgage coaches now that, you know, within a month of the closing, they're updating the, the mortgage coach TCA. So you had what you presented at prequal, you updated it once they were really netting out the, the mortgage decision. Then after it closes, you know, you start driving their goals. If they yep. said their goal was to pay off MI, let's put in an extra payment and show them how to pay off MI faster. If they mm -hmm. said their goal was to buy a bigger home in five years, let's show them how they can prepay their mortgage and build up equity and pay it off in three years. Or not pay it off, but build up enough equity to accomplish whatever their goal was. So, mm -hmm. so folks, you know, make sure you've got your perfect process. Hopefully, you know, Jen has resonated with you. Uh, by the way, if you have more questions, feel free to present those. Uh, also, you know, Jen, you, you know, a couple things because you mentioned that you meet so many people in person, and and I interviewed um, this top producer, uh, Jay Crowell, with Cornerstone um, several weeks ago, and this is what it looks like. You know, he does a lot over 50% of his interviews in his office, and often he'll have the client pull out their mobile phone and he'll drive them through an experience. I guess I would just ask you, you know, how are you delivering it? Are you delivering it through an email? I mean, this is the most common way where the mortgage coach TCA is delivered an email. Are you texting it to families? You know, what is what is your most common way to deliver the mortgage coach TCA to the realtor yeah. and the family? Right. Um, well, I don't deliver um, anything to anyone until they meet with me. <laughs> so that's that's the first thing, um, because what I've learned is that if I if I send something to someone uh, without them having met with me pers in in person, again, this is all about tracking. I will not get that deal. So I'm not going to waste my time. I already know I won't do it. People will call me and say, "Can you send me a good faith estimate?" No. Mm -mm. Because if I do, I just wasted my time, and you will go. You won't go with me anyway. And I, I just traditionally know that. So, I will. Um, so what I do is I do fact gathering using the mortgage planning questionnaire and the application. You know, an application, and and I then use that information. Um, I have a about a 15 minute phone call with my client. I'm letting them know I'm sending the mortgage planning questionnaire, and that will help me be more prepared for our discovery meeting, so that I'm not wasting their time. While, while I'm trying to read it and decipher it, because there might be something in that that uh, prompts me to have to do a little bit more research before we meet them. So when I meet with them, um, we're going over the mortgage planning questionnaire and identifying and making sure that everything's accurate. I'm, I'm highlighting things that they perhaps didn't think about in their question and answering. Um, and uh, at that point, um, I would have already prepared a TCA, but now I'm going to go through it with them. So I'm doing it right there on the spot. And then any adjustments that we're making, once that is finished, I send to them afterward along with the um, video that says, you know, thanks for meeting with me. It was a pleasure um, meeting with you uh, based on the conversation. This is this is what we look like moving forward. And that is the same one that I do the video to the real estate agent. Hey, I've met with them. Here's what we decided that we that we wanted to um, pursue, um, you know, for uh, you know, for their for their mortgage, for them for looking for a mortgage. So I present it to them in person, and then I email it to them with a video. Beautiful. Well, I, I love this quote you sent over. It's not a sales call. It's a service call. Yeah. And, yeah. and, there, and there's, there's no question that the way you do business is awesome. 
Uh, any family that is fortunate enough to, to have you as their loan officer is lucky. That's obvious. Now, I, I've interviewed enough top producers. While this is Jen's strategy, you know, a lot of great loan officers are sending emails to families. You know, make sure that you, you loop in the family so that they understand their options. Make sure if it's a prequal, you've CC'd the realtor so that they understand it. Um, you know, we've only got about 10 minutes left. So if anybody wants to get a question in, please make sure you submit it sooner rather than later. But I, I would love to know how, how do you describe mortgage coach in a total cost analysis so that mm -hmm. your realtor, your financial planner, your partners see value in it. So it's not something that's cryptic. If you could just give us some perspective on that. Yeah, so usually it, it honestly sounds just like this. I say, you know, what makes me different from other loan officers is that, you know, unlike a traditional loan officer who simply quotes rates, sells products, never shows up to closing, never to be heard from again, I spend an exorbitant amount of time identifying my client's needs through cash flow analysis, through total cost analysis, through tax benefits, through wealth building ben benefits, while identifying their entrance, maintenance, and exit strategies for their loan. That's what I do. So that is how I d identify and say that I am uniquely different. Um, and so I'm not here for the short term, I'm here for the long haul. I, I love it. So again, we recorded this. I mm -hmm. think you just heard a script from Jen. I mean, how powerful yeah. is that? And and then, of course, how powerful would it be if while you are saying all that, you're actually showing them an example. You're sharing a strategy. You're you're telling a story, and so that it's it's this powerful conversation. It's this visual representation of your total cost analysis. And again, you could text it to them right there. I mean, if you're in a meeting right. at a realtor's office. You can just go here. Let me, you know, let me show you how I help this family understand the value of moving up right. into a bigger home. And, and I you do know. that. Yeah, I definitely do that, Dave. Um, you know, while I'm while I'm sitting with them, because remember, I'm having a one-to-one -one with them. I'm using the frog, you know, approach. I'm using my networking summary, and I'm I'm showing and identifying. In fact, that picture that's showing right now is a real estate agent that I was sharing that with. So, what I was, and that was uh, part of a math class that I did, is saying, you know, here's what most people do. Here's what I do. Let me sit down with you. And she said, well, can you sit with me for a few minutes? And I said, absolutely. Let me sit after. So this class had about 50 people in it. And I was um, sitting with her going through, you know, how I can show, you know, these different things. Ironically, um, I'm actually going to be doing her loan now because she's like, I, I just don't want to work with anybody else because you do that. I 38% of my business is derived from financial planners, estate planners, and divorce attorneys. 21% uh, of my business is from my past clients and the balance is from other, which includes realtors. So you can see that I work with um, I work with realtors, but I don't work with every Tom, Dick, and Harry because they're too much trouble for me. <laughs> you know, So I'm showing this with my financial planners all the time, all the time. Beautiful, beautiful. So by the way, someone asked if you are creating the videos on your mobile device or are you doing it at your desktop. I mean, we've been... Trying to push. I our do it. Yeah, I do it. I create the video wherever I am. So uh, you know, if I'm if I am in my office and I'm doing something, then I create it there. If I'm on the road, I will create it there. Because if there's a change and I'm, you know, I'm usually not in my office, but um, an hour and a half every other week. <laughs> so got it. So it just depends. On, I might be in Starbucks. So. Right. On. Well, if you don't know how to do that, make sure you come to our our Wednesday mobile class or come to one of our Thursday classes, but it's really easy. And again, I wanted to remind everybody, the kinds of videos that you're adding to the mortgage coach scenario, it's, it's, it's brief. You know, I mean, it's, it's 90, 90 seconds, as Dave Ramsey put it, one minute and 26 seconds. You're netting out their name, their goals, you know, what is the strategy you're presenting, really high level. I, I drilled down this, drilled down in detail with my interview with Kelly Zitlow. So Kelly Zitlow, another awesome mortgage educator, not a loan officer, not a salesperson, but a mortgage educator. Um, she did a great job. I also covered this with my interview with Scott Cummings. And, and I want to remind everybody we have a lot of scripts. So there are some scripts 
around what should be in your video, you can download those, download those in the handout section. So, so Jen, uh, you know, we're getting towards the last five minutes. I am going to look for one more great question. Um, but before I look for that great question, what is some advice you just have, knowing that you're on the phone right now, you're talking to mortgage coaches, you know, what's some advice that you just have from your heart, knowing that you're talking to the mortgage coach community? So, okay, from, I would say the biggest thing that I hear from loan officers is just, I need more leads, I need more leads, <laughs> I need more leads, right? The, to really, really identify, because we, we talked a lot about, you know, what I do with the mortgage planning questionnaire, but these systems are, I call it finder, minder, and grinder. Um, you need to know your role. Are you going to be the finder, the minder, or the grinder? And if you're doing all of those and you're the one-man band right now, please cease and desist. It's costing you money not to have an assistant. It's costing you money. So if you use your, your time wisely and you have these systems built in place and you've identified the correct roles and responsibilities, then you don't have to do the paperwork. And so I always talk about, I call it the, the trinity of triumph. I only do what I am really good at. And I only do what I am passionate about doing. And I only do what it makes money sense. So I'm great at tax analysis, but I don't want to do it anymore. And, and it's not what I love to do, and it doesn't make me money. What makes me money is having someone on my team who can be equally as good. And while they're analyzing tax returns or researching a loan and doing loan placement, I'm creating relationships with my clients and their families and my, my financial um, planner partners and my real estate agents and presenting in a class so that I can get a lot of business that way. So I would encourage you to focus on only the activities that bring in the business so that you can dedicate the kind of time that I do and that other loan officers, you know, mortgage coaches do, to sharing and, and working more deeply with their clients because then those referrals will come in. If you don't have the systems and you're getting a bunch of referrals, then you're going to wear yourself out. After 30 some years in the business, listen to my voice. I am extremely passionate about what I do and I still have the eye of the tiger. Love it. So I do have one more question before I ask it. I want to remind everybody we did put a link to our mobile conversation training. It is in chat. I uh, want to remind you to go check that out. That, you know, that is just a training that not enough mortgage coaches go through, and we've got a recording of it. And we literally were dedicated every single Wednesday, 11 o'clock Pacific. We're going to teach you how to use a mobile device to be a badass mortgage coach. So. Um, the question comes in from uh, Bill. Bill Hoyt, good question. Uh, you know, he didn't say this, but I'm reading through the lines. You know, this concept of meeting with people for an hour and a half. You know, that may not work with millennials. So, so you know, what are you doing to address millennials in a way that's least convenient and and really connects with them? Or do you even have a millennial strategy and everybody's a person and you deal with them all the same? How would okay. you answer that? So, well, I'm going to get back to that launch, you know, assessing their needs. What we, we fail to do is assume that all millennials don't want to meet, right? So we're not going to meet with them. That's not going to work with them. I have to tell you, you know, here in Washington, D.C., the majority of my clients are millennials. These are, have you heard the new phraseology of Henry's? They're high, high earners, not, Henry, eight, high earners, not rich yet. Remember the old dinks, double income, no kids? Right. This is the new this is the new millennial era, it's Henry's. And these people make money and they're buying big houses and uh, they're first time home buyers. And I meet with every one of them. If they want to meet, I mean again, it's assessing their needs. Do they want to meet? And these people love meeting. They love knowing. The thing you have to know about millennials is they are all about education. All about education. So you're not selling. You're having an educational, and that's why I call it a discovery meeting. We're going to sit down and we're going to discover the options that are available for you because getting a mortgage is not selecting a mortgage. It's a process of elimination. We're going to eliminate what doesn't fit, what doesn't, you're not qualified for, etc. And in doing that, it requires you know, a lot of education and a lot of research. And I'm going to do all the research 
we're going to sit down and I'm going to help educate you through the entire process so that you don't rely on the gospel of Google to tell you how a mortgage is going to be done. I love so it. I love the I way you answer I that. wouldn't make that assumption. I wouldn't make that assumption. I would ask them what they want, and if they want to do it over the phone or online using, you know, a webinar or, you know, join.me or whatever, then do that. Then do that. Just don't bring your toolbox and dump it out on anybody. Anybody. Well, there's no doubt that millennials love education. They love technology. But you know what? They're human beings. They love getting face-to-face. And they love it when people care about them. And to your point, you know, make sure it's tailored. There are some millennials that do not want to meet with you. So, folks, you know, mm-hmm. give us a vote. Let us know what you thought about today's call from a good to great perspective. Also, if you are new to Mortgage Coach or you are a guest and you want a demo, so if you're a guest and you want a demo, uh, check that option. I want to remind you that every single day of the week we have training. Mondays is for beginners, so if you haven't created 10, 20 TCAs yet, Beginners, every Tuesday, I'm interviewing someone awesome. Every Wednesday, it's mobile conversations. Every Thursday, it's getting into the tactics, technology, how to use it. And so literally, there is training every single day. And folks, I think we can all agree that millennials like mobile devices. They like to get information on graphs and charts. So make sure you're using that. So Jen, thank you so much for making time to prepare for this call. Thank you so much for just, you know, sharing anything and everything I asked for. And You're uh, welcome. I look forward to the next time we do something like this. Thank you. Thanks thanks so much for the opportunity. You know, I love to share. So I, I appreciate you giving me that um, that platform to do this. Well, I'm getting awesome feedback. Uh, uh, Dan said, best call ever. Uh, oh. Diane said, the call yeah. rocked. Uh, Jen or Tammy said, Jen, you're awesome. Cynthia said, thank you, Dave and Jennifer. Great presentation today. So you got a lot of people that really liked what we did today. So great job. Good. High five. Well, I hope, I hope it makes a difference in their business. That's all I care about. All right. And by the way, the awesome feedback just keeps coming in. So you, a lot of people are going to be better off after hearing from you today, Jen. Take care. Take care. Bye, everybody. And may, hey, by the way, remember, go check out my LinkedIn post. I would really like to get that out there. So as a Mortgage Coach member, uh, go to my LinkedIn post, like it, share it. Let's get the word out there to realtors that if your loan officer is not delivering a total cost analysis, you're not not working with the best of the best. It's time to work with me. And make sure you use this scripting with realtors. Take care, everybody.